hey, what's up, friend? You are you interested in lack of skill? Yeah. Or maybe some suck. I'm just a new guy for the love of game. Wait, don't go. I know it's bad. Turn to change. The games are my thing, yeah. I know it's getting real late. Come on, look at me. I even do storytelling. Also, podcasts on great game subjects. Okay, yeah. I'm not a Markiplier or a PewDiePie. <laughs> but hey, that's what makes me so unique, right? 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 Hello. Have you been waiting for me, the one and only Mighty Nico, also known as the well-mannered teenager, the snowflake, the rambling idiot, and Vigil? I think you have been. Rise the roof, everyone. Rise the roof. Hello, everybody. It is truly I, Nico the Legend. I hope you're doing well, because, ah, you know, I was looking through these articles. This is going to be more on the hilarious side of things for the gaming, uh, for the gaming universe. And you'll see once we get into these articles, th there's only one, one article that, uh, that's not so like, haha, or like meme worthy or joking. It's just one pretty cool or kind of serious thing. Not, not, not even really too serious. It's just like a new game announcement, honestly, that we probably already expected that was going to happen. So I swear, this is the only serious article and the rest of them are hilarious. So funny. Get this guy off me. Okay, tough crowd. So guys, it is good to be back. How are you? Welcome. 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 Yo, Slippy, break it down. Fox, get this guy off me. Fox, Fox, get this guy off me. Oh man, things have been going a little rough for Nico here, folks. That's why you don't see my face. I'm not ready to show my face. You just gotta deal with the Nico avatar for right now. I know, bear with me. And uh, this is not even being recorded live. Yeah, this is pre-recorded. I know, I know. But Spotify listeners don't really care. Uh, so anybody who's listening to me out on Spotify, that's great. And before, you know what? Let's just get the shameless plugs out of the way. Hey guys, Nico the Legend. I'm on Spotify, YouTube. Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. You'll see the links all down below if you're watching this on YouTube. But uh, if you want to see the, the full backlog of Nico the Legend, YouTube is the place to go. And you just do the YouTube.com uh, slash C slash Nico the Legend. Or Nico Legend. Nico the Legend? Is that how it goes? Slash afterwards, I believe. I'm good at this, aren't I? Anyway, folks. Yeah, I, I think, you know... It's really cool, like putting stuff on Spotify. I like just looking at the list of episodes I've done. Does anybody do that when they do Spotify episodes, or looking at their video backlog that they posted on YouTube, or uh, if you're on Twitch, past broadcasts? I'm always the type of guy that likes to do that. I like to see what I've done and see how no returns I've gotten. By the way, speaking of no returns, YouTube. Subscribers on YouTube, what's the deal? What do you want from me? I've been stuck in the 950 range for the past two and a half months. I've never seen such a drop in sub count, view count, and all that. And you know what they, you know what the, the, the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I've been doing that for a while where the Mass Effect videos, you know, those are my bread and butter, the ones, the cream of the crop that YouTube decides to show mercy. Well, that's, that rug has been just pull out from underneath me because we're still in the 950 range. I, Mass Effect Legendary was the death of my channel. Once that released, I think we were just all burnt out or all just distracted by playing Mass Effect. Nobody really cared to look up anything else. But there have been some new developments from Bioware and stuff like Casey Hudson making his own studio because he probably got sick of working at shitty Bioware. Uh, more news on Mass, the next Mass Effect and what's been going on in the Mass Effect Legendary updates, blah, blah, blah. You know, like there's still been plenty of stuff to talk about. I've done it. I've shown you. But it's not working anymore. It's not, it's not happening. So I've been trying to do new things on my channel. I've been trying to, you know, do the Nico show. The Nico show hasn't even been doing that well uh, lately, you know, unfortunately. It looks like i got to get those interviews right back. Er, er, er. Uh, I don't know where that came from. 
but for real, it's uh, it's been a, a molasses process, slow as molasses, and it sucks. Uh, you know, come on, guys, come on, baby. Uh, what else do you want from me? You know, you can't. I'm just not like the like the Mass Effect whore hooker. You just pay a little bit of time and attention, and I mean, you can't even tip me yet. And then you just leave me in the doit. Come on, you gotta come back eventually. You know, I'm looking real good in this Roger Rabbit dress. Uh, you know what? Never mind. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. Stop right there, criminal scum. But that's besides the point. You know, it's just I'm trying new things. Oaken. Let me tell you something about Oaken. Oaken is the new character. The the uh, my my Jackal and Hyde personification. My Hyde persona uh, for the channel. Oaken the unbearable. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, we're going to be trying to do episodes for Oaken. I I'm going to try. You know me with scheduling. I, I don't really have a set schedule. I'm pretty laid back with this stuff. But we're going to try to... Uh, we're going to try to do a skit or some bits with Oaken, the unbearable. Uh, either every weekend or every week, you know. At least get the filming done. And then hopefully you see an episode maybe one every two weeks or something. Or who knows, right? Uh, and I hope, I hope you guys receive it well. Uh, I did... I did an Oaken unboxing video for the Mass Effect Legendary Edition a couple months ago. And I, I kept that, and then, you know, Oaken's part in that video is about five minutes long, or something, roughly around five minutes. And then afterwards, it's serious Nico opening up the box. Although I do have some quick-witted things in there to say about the Legendary Edition. But besides the point, I decided to make that Oaken part on its stand on its own two feet, and release it as a standalone video with no serious Nico the Legend unboxing afterwards. It's just the five minutes of Oaken. That's his skit. That's his bit. And I had a fun time doing that. So I decide I want to do some more stuff with Oaken. I want Oaken to go somewhere to a point where people only want Oaken in his silly skits. So I'm going to have a lot of fun and creativity with the tools I don't have. Uh, I'm glad I have a green screen. I'm going to try to utilize the green screen quite a bit. Uh, it's going to be great. Um, yeah, this isn't going to be like Hollywood-esque video work, but I'm going to try my best, and uh, I, hope to, I hope it goes well. I think I got, some, I got the next couple episodes planned out, so I hope you guys check out Oak and the Unbearable. But anyway, uh, I, I just wish I was at the, the 1,000 subscribers so I can do a Nico show, 1,000 subscribers special, and then also I can just take a break from YouTube for like a month or two or something like that. Seriously, I would love to do that and come back and have a great comeback on the channel with probably Oaken bit or an Oaken episode or something like that. <sighs> so folks, uh, let's get into Nico's personal stuff going on and then the games that I can't wait to play. You know how it goes if you've been here before. Uh, if you guys are just tuning in, because this will be a premiere episode on YouTube, that's the great thing about YouTube. If I don't stream it live, at least the premiere can run live, and it's like it's there. It's like it's running live. It's like it's got I got the I can get an audience and stuff, and you guys can have conversations with one another. With one another, but it won't be live, live like as the as the episode is being recorded, pretty much. But still, I I just think it's great. You can do premiere stuff, and people can stop by. So don't worry, guys. At least I build that illusion if I don't want to show my face or stream it live. Sometimes I just don't feel like streaming it live due to, you know, uh, something I'm going to be streaming later, like a game or something. I just don't want to double dip so much anymore on, on Twitch. I've been trying, well, I don't know if you look at my backlog on Twitch for streaming, but I don't know. I, I say I try to tune it back, but you can look at the collection. It doesn't look like I'm tuning it back. But I am at least tuning back how much I stream in terms of hours. Like on average, I try to do two to three, and that's it. Uh, anything past that, I, I'm, I gotta be playing with friends or something, honestly. Um, otherwise, I just stick to the two to three hour mark. Sweet Coden, it's always been two hours for the mo you know, for about 95% of the time. So, personal life, what games I wanna play, and then, then we gotta get to these articles because these articles are going great. So, personal life, I hate to keep saying this, but some good news. I do. I'm still looking for a second job, but I do have a job interview uh, at another gym. I won't say which one, of course. And uh, as a personal trainer, so hopefully uh, I can I can train at both gyms because I'm already training at one. 
hoping I can spread my wings even further at this other gym. This other gym is more on the corporate side. The, the first gym that I'm working at, first job is more on, the, it's laid back, more like it's not very corporate. It's a small business type organization and it, it, it's really nice. Corporate gyms, eh, I don't really like too much to work. Probably, I don't know. I, I mean, who's to say I haven't worked at it yet, but still, you know, you get you get those corporate vibes as soon as you step in, you're like, ugh, and you just want to work out, and sometimes that feels like one of those corporate members are uh, lackeys or workers are looking or breathing down your neck, or uh, caressing my boobs, hey! Fuck, get this guy off me! That's the size of the point, so that's good news. Uh, that's... I, oh, let's talk about Nico the Legend. I just had to think of it real quick. Uh, the preface for Nico the Legend is done. Um, I was wanting to do an author's note slash preface, and I decided to just do a preface to kind of give you guys a rundown of my personal, of words from the author pretty much, for me, letting you know like kind of like the backstory of this. Just It's not that long. I didn't want to go so far into detail, but it just gives you an idea where I'm coming from. And I wasn't expecting to... I wasn't expecting to do one, but I thought it would be, you know, kind of polite and kind of a more down-to-earth approach on reaching out to any readers who would decide to pick up Nico the Legend, which is my first fantasy novel I've ever created that's going to be published, and I will get a paperback, and, I, and it will be published online, of course, on Amazon. Uh, so, steps left. I have to... I did the third revision, and then I'm running through it one more time. It's not really a revisement. It's more like... Uh, I bold out the lore. I put some of the sentences uh, in bold lettering uh, when I'm talking about the lore, and I go through all the chapters. Uh, and I think it's about 16 chapters I have to run through to make sure they all connect. And I'm pretty much building my list of like characters and lore, like having a page for that, which is a good idea. I think anybody should be doing that. I'm just really late to that game because you know you learn as you go. First book, yada yada. So once I get that done. Then I can do the edit. I can hopefully have friends I can trust that can do the editing that that are wanting to do this, that can take the time out of this. Of course, I'll pay them. Not too much, unfortunately, because I gotta. I'm budgeting as it is when it comes to this stuff. Hiring a professional editor is really expensive. Uh, it's not easy, and I, I'm one of those people that don't want to get a loan from a bank or something. But you know, high risk, high reward. I get it. Some people do do that, and then. They either fail or succeed. And if you succeed in getting your book somewhere out there, then you can pay back the bank or whatever, no problem. But if you fail, which is a very high probability considering how competitive uh, getting a book out there and making it popular or people to give a shit about is really difficult. Like with anything in forms of art, it's a competitive landscape out there, whether you think of it as, it, as that approach or not. So, you got the editing. Uh, I'm going to be personally drawing a f uh, some illustrations to add in the book. That's right, me, because I want to save as much money as I can. And the illustrations are gonna just going to get the job done. I'm going to try my best to do this. And it's not going to be it's not gonna be horrible illustrations by any means. Actually, uh, my brother did... The, so, I actually did the, the, ma the, the main sketch illustration of... Um, they, I, I'm going to try to put this on the inside of the book, um, or maybe even, maybe even on the back of the book. No, on the inside is fine. Um, to where you see the sword in the ground and the, and, and Mew, the cat, and then the house. Like that initial sketch, like I, I drew that out initially. And then my brother, you know, smoothed out the edges and then he did some Photoshop work and stuff. And so, you know, it was pretty fun. That was great. That was a long ass time ago. I, that was like six years ago or something. It was crazy. Anyway, inspiration was there. It was awesome. So this time I'm going to be doing the illustrations, uh, the rest of them, which shouldn't be too difficult, I would, you know, I would think. And then, um, yeah, and then we get it published. And uh, yeah, editing and publishing is, is the main thing. And that's going to be a pain in the dick. That's going to take a long time, unfortunately. But I can't wait till it's out there. I mean, shoot. Honestly, if you guys didn't even give a crap, I could just... Uh, before I, I... Obviously, I got to patent this story so nobody can steal my work. I'm just saying it's a good idea anyway. You never know. Uh, whether it be a decent story, crappy, or good. You'd be surprised. You know, another man's trash... Is, one man's trash is another man's treasure, right? 
So, uh, I like, you know, handing out rough drafts. It's, it gets the job done, right? The words are there. Uh, it's just like when you get it published and online and then, you know, get a paperback. Of course, it's just way more official and it looks more professional. But, you know, sometimes you just, you got to take the victories, you know, wherever you can get. At least the book is done. <laughs> right? At least it's done. That's the main part of it all. Anyway, see how much, see how passionate I am about this stuff with the Nico Legend crap? It's just insane. Uh, I can't get enough. So, does anybody want to hear some more? Come on. Right there, what? Liar. Oh, okay, that's fair. So, okay, one last thing. This is some sad news, but I'm going through some personal biz, some personal family biz. I'm not going to go into detail any further, but just so you know, uh, if I ever seem kind of down or while I'm streaming or anything, you, I just know that I'm going through some family stuff. And let's see, I recorded this 7-13-2021. Uh, so this entire week is going to be pretty, uh, it's going to be some big hurdles along the way. So, you know, uh, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not asking for prayers or you to pity me or say sorry. I'm just letting you know uh, the whole shebang or the little bit of the shebang. So, enough about that. What games do I want to play? You know what? I talked about this. I wanted to play Super Mario or Mario Party Superstars, Pokemon, uh, Brilliant Diamond, of course, and then Tales of Arise. I can't wait to, till that JRPG goodness comes out. I'm really excited. I'm gonna get that on the PS5. And then, of course, the multiplayer game that I'm waiting for, I can't wait to play with friends or with my brothers, is Halo Infinite. And I think the beta should be coming out sometime this week, so I got the Halo Insider sign up and all that going. Yeah, there's some things I'm pretty excited for to, to play and to come out, and I can't wait. Uh, thanks to my friend Gary, who, who decided to give me Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, so thank you, Gary. Uh, it's not out yet, but... It, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. I'm going to be a Pokemon master. I'm going to be way past cool. No, no, not that one. There we go. So that's pretty exciting. These, But Tales of Arise, I, I'm, I think, I, I hope that game does well. The thing is about the Tales series is that their games are always, to me, they're hit or miss. And the setting looks great in this. The graphics look great. Uh, I need to look at the combat and do some more research on it like watch the previews to see what all the the main professionals websites say and youtubers talk about their you know if there's like a they should release a demo in all honesty uh i think they should release a demo because this this game is kind of like a big deal for a lot of people especially people who really like the tales series uh, a lot there's tons of people out there that the tales series is their favorite jrpg franchise like many are is final fantasy for you um you know so on and so forth uh yeah even yesterday i was watching all the intros to all the tales games because some of them i really do like some of them are really low budget or kind of crappy songs at least for me uh, my personal favorites is Vesp uh, tales of vesperia zisteria symphonia and uh, Tales of Arise's intro song was all right. It wasn't the best one that I've seen, but at least it was not the worst one. It was just, eh, it was in the middle. But it could grow on me, right? Some songs, they, they grow on you. It doesn't have to be an instant hit right away, although that's always great when it is. But sometimes you just don't get the, the, the approach they were trying to go with, right? You don't know the exact, the whole backstory or how to truly feel about the song. It might take your brain a little bit to process. And it takes, sometimes it just takes a little bit more hammering on the nail. Sometimes you can get, hammer a nail right away, but sometimes you gotta just chip away, right? You just gotta ha 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 ha. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Stop right there, criminal scum. Uh, with that said, Tales of Arise. Hope it does well. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, let's do another round of applause for anybody who's here. Appreciate it. Anybody who stops by and watching this on the pre-recorded show on YouTube. Or it's listening to on Spotify or wherever. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm trying to get the Nico Show podcast. I know there's just so many podcasts out there. And doing a podcast these days is just like, I don't know, walking out your front door pretty much. But not everybody does that. So there's still some challenge involved. Uh, geez, I, I, I'm not funny. Now, what I said before, the first article was going to be something... Well, I said serious, but it's really not that serious. It's just a game that's developed, being developed, and uh, I think it's to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Persona. The Persona franchise is turning 25. 
what? That's pretty cool, right? Persona? If you guys don't know what Persona is, that's okay. Uh, not many people, uh, there's plenty of people that know about it and there's plenty of people that don't. But take it as a JRPG life sim game. That's long as hell. You wanna know what the average playtime of beating the game for Persona 5? Casual, and this is what it was for me too because I've, I've beaten Persona 5 and I feel very accomplished doing it. 98 hours. I'm not kidding. That is a casual playthrough. 98 fucking hours. Okay, so if you got time to, to, to burn like many other many of us do, uh, and many more, that is a long time for a single player JRPG game. It's pretty crazy. What's the average for normal JRPGs? 40 to 50? Sometimes in the 30 to 40, uh, 30 to 40. Oh my God, it's fucking crazy in Persona. But I don't regret it because Persona games take you on this fantastic journey of all these character dynamics, relationship buildings. It's got great turn-based JRPG. And it, these games aren't easy. These are challenging games, by the way. These are, uh, these are probably one of the more, diff uh, to me, on the more difficult side of things. And I always play on normal mode, okay? And... My God, I can't tell you how uh, intense and frustrating it was in the final boss of Persona 5. My God, dude. It was down to the wire to pretty much the final turn for either me to die or the boss to die. And that's, and oh man, it's happened once before it's the final boss and then I wanted to just cry where I lost that time. But then the fight afterwards, I was like, no, this is the fucking one. This is the most obnoxious boss fight I've ever done, but I'm going to do it. And I did beat it. Oh my god, I was I was one of one of the glorious moments I've ever had because that boss was kind of stupid hard in a way. Um, but JRPGs they they can be pretty difficult. They Japanese developers they love having difficulty spikes. Uh, um, Yakuza like a dragon, <clears throat> just to list you know just one prime example because that was a big JRPG I beat earlier this year. That game, talk about difficulty spikes in two locations where I had to sit there and grind 10 more levels. Because it's like, you know, easy going, and then wah, you hit a fucking brick wall, and you're like, what the fuck? And it's usually by a really difficult boss. But uh, I like the, you know, when I like a game so much, even if it does have uh, difficulty spikes or grinding uh, mania, uh, I, can, I can get through it, you know? Anyway. Persona 6 is being developed. Anyway, Persona series is pretty great. I've only played Persona 4 and 5. Uh, if you want to play a great turn-based JRPG with great fantastic character storylines and some wonky, wacky-ass shit, kind of psychotrope, just psychedelic in a way, kind of like a psychological thriller JRPG, that's, that's, how, I, that's how I preface it. It's fucking fantastic. Really long, though, so expect not too casual. So Persona 6 uh, is being developed. It's confirmed by Atlas. And you know Atlas is releasing Shin Megami Tensei 5 for the Switch this year, which is great. So and recently, uh, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, the, the remaster, just recently came out for all platforms, which is also good. Uh, although I didn't, I played the vanilla version, the uh, non-definitive, and it, I did not like it. I thought that game was pretty crap. I was like, Persona, way better for me than this edgelord fucking game. Ugh. Anyway, uh, yeah, Persona is a spinoff, in case anybody doesn't know. Persona is the spinoff series or universe of Shin Megami Tensei, okay? So if you ever see a Persona game, it should have above it uh, the, the logo or the title, Shin Megami Tensei. So this is great news. Persona 6, I'm glad this is coming coming our way. Uh, these, You know these games are going to take a lot of work. Uh, this article is just pretty much stating like, hey, it's real. It exists, of course. And it's also letting us know that it's going to be very difficult for them to make. And who knows when this is going to come out. Persona 4 to 5 took a long time to release. It took them nearly 10 years to release. It was supposed to release back on the PS3 only. But then they decided to do PS4. And then I'm sure it went through development hell or whatever you want to call it. it. It took them a long fucking time to do. I mean, shit. We just got Persona 4 Golden on PC only. Which I don't understand why Atlas didn't release it for consoles. Because they know... I'm like, you guys know you're going to you're gonna sell this shit like hotcakes, right? Like, this is a very hot item. Persona 5 got greatest hits on PlayStation. And you guys made the definitive version, Persona 5 Royale. Which I don't know if I'll ever get. It's like JRPGs, it's just like, uh, do I want to go through all that crap again? 
It's the same thing with Dragon Quest XI Definitive Edition. I played the hell out of the regular version of Vanilla, uh, like over 100 hours in it. And that's good enough for me, you know, despite all the extra bits and bulbs. I'm just not, I don't know if it's, it's fun, but it's a long fucking game. And it's even longer when they do this shit. Persona 5 Royale, Royale is like an extra 30 hours. I'm like, what the fuck? It's just crazy. It's just crazy. So, uh, they're trying with Persona 6. I, I, it's, they're following the same philosophy as before. And you know developers should be doing this every time. I mean, don't fix what isn't broken. But you should always want to make the, the, the sequel better. Or have better quality of life stuff. Or things that you couldn't do before due to technical limitations that you can do in the new game. And you can have some more fun that way. Uh, you know, and that's pretty much what Alice has to worry about. You know, they have to worry about how to make... How to, where to go from Persona 5 because a lot of people say that game was fantastic. It was great. It was great. A lot of people had a great time. So what do you do? You just got to use your imagination at this point in Persona 6. Uh, but, you know, this is something you do with sequels all the time, as I mentioned before. I don't mean to repeat myself, but you got to hit the nail on the head sometimes. Uh, right, Slippy? And this is how it be. So Persona 6... Just know that it's real, and they're going to try it. Atlas is going to do everything in their power to make sure that this is a great sequel. Uh, a lot of the games don't really... Ha they don't have the same characters in their games. It's always a different group of kids and a different story each time. Almost like kind of kind of like how Final Fantasy is. But this makes me excited because I... I uh, like I said, I like the Persona games, and I'm always excited to see what the new, which new setting or where it's going to take place. Uh, and how the story is going to be because uh, all the stories are very they're vastly different but they're all psychological trips man they do a good job with stuff like that and uh you know i'm excited to see it come out i hope it just comes out on like the next gen consoles like like ps5 pc and then uh, xbox series x you know i want to see uh a new coat of paint with better graphics and stuff It'd be really cool because, like I said, you don't want technical limitations in a JRPG. Trust me, you can you see that a lot. It'd be really bad. Someone's calling me. Oh, scam likely? Well, fuck you. So, that is the serious thing. That This is it. Now, the next articles I'm going to talk to you about, guys, that I'm going... Oh, my God. I hope you're ready for this, because this is going to be... Some of this, some of these are really silly, and some of these I couldn't believe, because I, I, I think it's kind of... It's amusing. If it's not silly or trolly or memey it's at least amusing or interesting to me uh so persona 6 development confirmed by alice good job <sighs> okay we're talking about memes here this was uh this article came out june se uh, july 7th right so i'm a little late on talking about this but whatever right what was it? it's it hasn't been a week yet it's been close to a week since this came out guys Ubisoft's next Assassin Creed will be a live service game. You know how much that hurts me? You know what? Let's just... Let's just get this out of the way. Uh -oh, retard alert! Retard alert, class! Fuck! Get this guy off me! There you go. That's gonna be for the... That's, that's the vibe and feel we're gonna be getting for these next articles, okay? And we gotta... We're gonna be running through this, hopefully, uh efficiently i'm not going to read the exact all through the articles unless i really need to but i can give you a pretty good uh, explanation on what this is so the next assassin's creed game will be a live service game yep and it's being called the code name is infinity <sighs> infinity on the pocketbooks or infinity in terms of uh playing this game and enjoying it so just when you thought that assassin's creed was already well not assassin's creed anymore because they went from stealth assassination uh, semi-open world game to fully open world with barely any assassinations to where they were just pr most likely cashing off of the witcher 3 because it's like oh that looks pretty good hey don't get me wrong Asset ubisoft does a great fucking job in open world games in my opinion i think i mean i loved odyssey i think odyssey was one of the greatest looking games to this day still and i had a blast playing it uh one day we'll play valhalla probably on the ps5 uh, when it's dirt cheap, because I love Vikings. I like um, also, uh, you know, Anglo-Saxon or medieval setting. And uh, yeah, one day though, because that game's also long as hell. Uh, I'm not completely, I beat Odyssey once, but I'm, I'm not entirely done. I don't think you can ever be entirely done with uh, with these big-ass games. 
So, I guess after that trilogy of open world games, what are they going to do next? They're going to make a fucking live service game for Assassin's Creed. Something that no one asked for. You know, this this is the real kicker, the, the kicker in the nuts. Okay. Ubisoft, I remember seeing this because I voted for this. No, 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 I didn't vote. I saw an article stating that Ubisoft was, they were doing a survey and asking the gamers or the consumers or players what they want to see for the next Assassin's Creed game. They were, they didn't have a clue. And this, that was a few days before this announcement was made. I find that really, like, scummy. It's like, why did you ask us on where the series should go next? My personal opinion, I think it should just go back to being a stealth game. But what do I know? Actually, you know what? They shouldn't just make any more games. How about that? They made enough as it is. Make a Splinter Cell game, Ubisoft, you motherfuckers. Jesus. I mean, go... I guess Assassin's Creed is their stealth, is their Sam Fisher games. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's like you guys would strike gold real easily if you brought Sam Fisher back. But what the fuck do I know? Let's just make a, a, a TV show for it. Or just have him cameo in certain... Ghost Recon games, because that's what people wanted. Fucking sh schmucks. But now, now when you thought Assassin's Creed was all about, you know, just the, the player's personal experience and just having a good time, not having to worry about, well, I wouldn't say completely microtransactions and then quests being added, like weeklies and dailies and shit, which Assassin's Creed does not fucking need that. Come on. Let's, there's already, you guys already make enough big, enough quests and things for us to do anyway. But I digress. Now it's just going to be, you know, that was, it was all sprinkles. It was all bits and pieces. Now it's going to be a full on live game. It's going to be like an anthem. It's going to be like how Dragon Age 4 was going to be. But EA backed off from that because they realized how much money they would make more from just making Dragon Age a single player game only. Thanks to Star Wars Fallen Order as a prime example. And that game is still selling like fucking hotcakes, by the way. And it's not being talked about enough. I don't get it. I think because people just don't like EA. I don't know, but just look up the stats. Just look it up. When a single-player Star Wars game uh, changes EA's philosophy f for uh, a couple games, you really w begin to wonder what's, what's like, whoa. Anyway, guys, this is, like I said, th this is something that no one wanted to know about, wanted to see. Uh, but here's the, here's the rundown of the actual game. E so usually Assassin's Creed... These games go through one historical setting. Well, now there's going to be uh, multiple historical settings. So I'll bet you're all excited for that, which it sounds interesting. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I think that'd be pretty neat. I don't know what they're going to be because they've done quite a bit, but I'm sure they'll come up with things for us to do. I don't see it being necessary. I don't see another Assassin's Creed game being necessary for the longest time, if any time ever, because I think Valhalla should have been the last um, honestly, I, I think it should have. And if they did come back, just make it a stealth game only or a remake of the first game or some shit. Like, yeah, if you want to do that, do a remake of the first game. And then that's it. You know, you can just... Everything's fine. Everything is fine. That way. Uh, you don't have to worry about any stuff like that. Oops, I gotta exit out of these chats. Sorry, C-sharp. Um... <clears throat> I'm recording, sorry. Nobody knows but me. So, how does this make you feel, guys? Do you want to see Assassin's Creed go the uh, life service route updates every fucking day of your life to where you just have to worry about the game watching you? To where you can't even play an offline mode or anything? Remember how Diablo 3 went with that? Oh, good times. Everybody had a good time uh, discussing that. So, uh... God, it's just ridiculous i don't even want to talk about this it's just annoying anyway just know that live service game multiple historical settings and nobody asked for it and thanks ubisoft for asking us what we wanted the next one for fucking nothing you jerk offs okay next one okay this is this is funny to me because i've never seen a game being sold out digitally yeah you heard me digitally i can't even say it right digimon Usually it's like, oh, physical, like PS5s or the Switches or Metroid Dread Special Editions or graphics cards, like the scalping of physical objects. No, 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 no. Like, that's just an example of 
how things can be sold out and then sold on the black market for way more. Yeah, I'm looking at you, eBay. Looking at you. But Final Fantasy fourteen. I don't know if you guys know, Final Fantasy XIV is this great MMO that came out many moons ago. And it has never been so fucking popular. I, I don't even understand why. I mean, I do, but at the same time, like, Shadowbringers has been out for the past couple years. I know they announced a new expansion, but it's like, is the expansion really getting people this hyped up? Is this because it's the last expansion? I, I, I'm trying to remember if it is. But it's crazy. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV is destroying records on having most concurrent players on Steam. It's sold out in North America on the digital storefront, on the Square Enix storefront. You can't buy it. It's gone. They're even making a cookbook. <laughs> so, if gamers attempt to buy a digital copy of the MMORPG from the publisher's official website, they'll be greeted with an error message. Upon adding the item to your basket and entering your payment details, oh, uh, just food for thought or whatever, just real quick. I bought this. I bought Final Fantasy XIV Day One, and I bought the complete edition for uh, for PS, PlayStation, and for the PC. So I'm good. I'm I'm caught up. I can play this at any time I want. I just don't want to pay for a subscription. Anyway, uh, we are sorry. The amount of items requested exceeds what is currently in stock. We have removed the excess from your cart. Oh my god, dude! Where have you ever seen that? Below the pop up is the adenum. Uh, that explains that there are currently no PC download copies of Final Fantasy XIV available for purchase. Oh my god. So here's a quote from the tweet from Skill Up on Twitter, right? Final Fantasy XIV had such an upsurge in popularity that the game is sold out on the Square Enix storefront. So you cannot buy a digital copy and you cannot create new characters on the North America servers. This is absolute insanity. I'm fucking serious. This is crazy. Let's see. I want to look. I want to read this. I want to look at this fucking picture. Oh my god. It's just all full. Holy balls. You guys can't see it on Spotify, but just know that fucking A, dude. That is crazy. What? <laughs> uh, Jesus. Score Enix is fucking making so much money. Fans have taken to the game subreddit to try and get to the bottom of why this might be, with many attributing it to Final Fantasy XIV's recent surge in popularity. User Kaizos elaborates that out of stock for digital items usually means that the suppliers run out of pre-generated codes due to a sudden influx in demand. Now, this isn't necessarily a good thing because, look, it's good that they're selling out, but high upkeep. You know, when you can't supply and demand anymore, when you reach a certain, you know, a tipping point, uh, you hit a wall, that's not good. Uh, it's good on the way to the wall, but once you hit that wall, that financial wall where consumers want it and they can't get it, that's when the uh, people get upset. That's when the pitchforks come out. So it's, you know, you have low upkeep, mid upkeep, and high upkeep. High upkeep, just think of it as like World of Warcraft and RTSs, right? Low upkeep, you got a lot of resources and stuff, and you got your, you have an overabundance amount of supplies and stuff for your troops and stuff because you just have, uh, I don't know, the main barracks and like two knights and then three peasants getting gold. Like low upkeep right there. High upkeep is when you build way too many farms, barracks, and have an army of like 50,000 troops or something. And then you got to really keep, you know, it costs way more to keep the gears turning and then you can, you get, you plateau. And so this is what this is. They plateaued. And that's, you know, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword. It's good that they're making all that money and there's a ton of fucking people playing, but now they're going to have to spend more money to make sure that people can get these codes. I'm talking about Square Enix. Square Enix is going to have to spend more money to maybe open up servers to maybe somehow limit people's game times, which I know would never go well, but I, you wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised on a corporate side of things, on a marketing side. Um, and then, yeah, new servers, more pre-generated codes. It's, they're going to have to figure out something because I don't even think Square Enix fucking knew this was going to happen. But like I said, this is a double-edged sword. Uh, <clears throat> so if this turns out to be the case, then it's truly staggering accomplishment in terms of sales. Meanwhile, uh, Torment did drag and speculates that the problem is more likely to do with excess strain being placed on the game's servers. To we'll clarify, in this scenario, digital copies would not actually be sold out. Instead, the theory goes that the developers are temporarily, temporarily delisting the PC codes in order to prevent new players from joining while they figure out how to increase server capacity. Yeah, see? I'm, I, I fucking know this stuff. It's basic economics. 
Final Fantasy XIV has certainly experienced a rapid growth in the player base lately. Yesterday, the gamer reported that the MMORPG has experienced a dramatic spike in pre-orders for its upcoming Endwalker update, which has already overtaken previous expansions like 2019 Shadowbringers. Despite Endwalker not releasing for another four months, it is scheduled for November 19th and is still highly anticipated by fans. <clears throat> So you want to, here's the real reason why it's it's so popular. This is because the update promises to tie up remaining loose ends in the narrative and bring an 11 year story arc to a close. There you go. That is the main reason because people are getting so hyped to see the fi- the finale. You know how people get finale for The Witcher, Game of Thrones, anything. Supernatural? I mean, fuck, man. Video games? An MMO reaching a climactic finale? That's pretty rare. They still update and make expansions for Final Fantasy XI. World of Warcraft's has, story hasn't even fucking ended. Which, I, God, I wish it would. So we could stop cash grabbing at this fucking point. At least Square Enix has the balls to be like, Yeah, let's make the story end here after four fucking expansions. Which, by the way, those expansions are fantastic. They are great. And I, I, I know life... Final Fantasy XIV last year got a main, got a character all the way to max level, beat all the expansions, good old Dragoon, uh, during the pandemic. Because what else am I was, was I supposed to do besides jerk off? I mean, read books and work on it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, retard alert. Retard alert, class. So, uh, so I would be okay because I have the game. I got the expansions, right? I'm not trying to rub it into anybody. Uh, but the only problem I would have is just ser- getting into a server, being in queue, and then uh, wanting to just play normally. But those servers have got to be pretty laggy. I can't imagine the frame drops in like a populated area. I just think this is hilarious, though, because I've never seen this in, in MMO history. And it doesn't help that top streamers are playing this game, like Asmogold, Shroud. Wait, Shroud? No, Asmogold. I think Shroud's playing it. Extra life, like any anyone that's got over like I don't know a million followers or some shit, like Asthma Gold is just bringing in like over a hundred thousand people watching him. It's fucking crazy. Uh, so st- Twitch streamers are definitely uh, part of the blame on why this is happening too. But everyone's excited, man. Everyone's excited. Hey, I I, I want to say that I'm actually excited that the Old Republic is getting a brand new expansion after many years called Legacy of the Sith to celebrate 10 years. I love the Old Republic. I actually like the Old Republic more than Final Fantasy XI, I mean 14, just because I love Bioware storytelling. And the storytelling is great in uh, everything after vanilla Final Fantasy XIV, like Heaven's Ward is my, probably my favorite expansion, just because I like the, the setting and, and where you go and dragons and all this stuff. Uh, and then so on and so forth. Um, the, fantastic writing, though. So, there you go. Final Fantasy XIV is currently unavailable in North America. Oh, God. All right, guys. It, just, it gets even better from here on the next article. You guys are ready? So, are you living in the Ukraine? Are you getting crypto farming with your PS4 Pro? Are you getting that done on your PS4 Pro? Well, you better hide it because, ooh, let's just say the farm allegedly stole electricity from the nation's grid. The crypto farming was so hardcore in the PS4 Pro. PS, uh, in your crane with PS4 Pros. Isn't that great? <sighs> so, <laughs> I, I had to bring this up because this is actually kind of funny to me. Uh, the security service of Ukraine has discovered and raided a cryptocurrency mining farm that has allegedly stole electricity from the country's power grid. It sounds like Avalanche from Shinra in Final Fantasy VII. What? But instead of fighting computers, the agency found racks with thousands of PS4 Pros stacked vertically side by side. Not even my Big Macs could be stacked that high. Shit, I want one. As reported by Kotaku, the Ukrainian authorities confiscated over 5,000 gaming-related devices, 3,800 of which were consoles, from a warehouse right next to and formerly owned by the uh, the Vinny Stelabergo Energy Distribution Company. It's the largest crypto farm the SBU has discovered so far. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the only largest one. And the agency believes it's being operated by people living in the cities of Kyiv and Vinistia. Uh, apparently, the operators use special electricity meters to prevent authorities from discovering the theft, which amounted to as much as the U.S. $257,000. Oh, my God. 
At the same time, the SPU wrote in its announcement, the illegal withdrawal of the electricity could lead to more global consequences. Entire neighborhoods of uh, Venestia could be left without electricity. <laughs> hey, you guys got your crypto PS4s? Us in Florida? I got my hurricanes that take power away, so I know how you feel. Except uh, your buildings don't get destroyed by weather. You just get destroyed by nerds. Uh, so, uh, Vinny Celebernergo denied any involvement in a statement sent to a Kyiv post. The equipment used for cryptocurrency mining has never operated on premises owned by our enterprise. Yeah, okay, fucking, are you kidding me? Do you guys see this picture? Spotify, you had, I'm sorry you can't see this picture, but there are just stacks of PS4 Pros hooked up. Oh my God, that is ridiculous. Uh, it also said that it didn't find any evidence of electric theft and that the SBU's findings does not correspond to reality. While it's unclear at the moment whether the facility truly stole electricity or not, the SBU has published images of the PS4 Pros it found in the warehouse, which you can see below. At Kotak as Kotaku notes, 3,800 consoles mean an investment of around US $1.5 million, assuming all of them are PS4 Pros. <laughs> Maybe there's a lot of them that are like stuffed turkeys. They stuff, stuff the PS4 Pros just to look more intimidating and more official. I don't know. Listen, Ukrainians, Ukrainians uh, I don't know what... I don't know what's going on over there in Ukraine with crypto farming and stealing electricity. If that's if that whole thing is true, this is all allegedly, right? Allegedly, you know, this just makes an interesting uh, like a uh, experiment. You know, it's like, what's the reaction of of you know the uh, security service finding out why their power is running out because a bunch of sweaty nerds are crypto farming with PlayStation fours? Would Bezos be upset? I don't know. Bezos, tell me. Tell me, tell me, you son of a bitch. This is all your fault. Where are my Doge coins? But uh, I digress, folks. This is <sighs> no wonder people are fucking scalping hard for PS4 Pros because of these assholes. Fuck you, Ukrainians that did this. You bunch of assholes. All right, is this the last one? Oh my god. Okay, this is probably. The most joking one of all. I'm glad I saved this for last. This is the best one. I hope you guys are ready. And one last thing from Goku. And this, what he doing is to go even further beyond. All right. Cyberpunk, yes, Cyberpunk. I think I can't stop talking about Cyberpunk because every time I do a Nico Show episode, there's always something to talk about with Cyberpunk. Uh, they don't get me, they get me shit for views on YouTube, standalone videos, but at least, you know, this is more streamlining and more casual and I don't feel so guilty. <clears throat> but this has got to be like a cardinal sin. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a sip of my water real quick. And I really don't have any more. Cyberpunk 2077 was the best-selling game on the PlayStation Store in June. Yes, you heard me right. The game that ruined all Neckbeard's lives. The people, the the people where got so upset where they sent death threats because the game was half finished. Even hacked Cyberpunk and stole their source codes and sell sell it to the black market for uh, a ransom and just. And it did, Cyberpunk did so bad out the door, even though it sold like hotcakes, uh, on PlayStation, it was a disaster to where Sony had to officially take it off the PlayStation Store until the game was deemed competent or playable. Now, that was back in last December. Now, let's get you caught up to speed on why this is such a thing, on why it was the best-selling game on the PlayStation Store in June. Oh, my God. But just like, why would you buy this game on the PS4? This game is definitely was built for PCs in mind. But thanks to CD Projekt Red with their greedy little fingers, greedy little thumbs, uh, they had to put it on previous gen, which they should have just done a year later. And then current gen and PC should have gotten, you know, well, you know where I'm getting at. In a few days of availability, Cyberpunk 2077 managed to become the top-selling PlayStation 4 game on the PlayStation Store last month. Yeah, crazy. It wasn't Ratchet and Clank for the PlayStation. Well, I mean, that's for PS5. 
I can understand why Ratchet and Clank wasn't top selling because now everybody has a PS5 thanks to fucking pieces of shit scalpers and price gougers, so fuck you guys. In a new blog post on the official PlayStation blog, it has been confirmed that CDPR's latest role-playing game, which returned to the PlayStation Store on July 21st, was the best-selling game in both North America and Europe. And hear me out, guys. On July 21st, at the end of the month, is when it was put back, and it still managed to become the best-selling game. After all the days before in July, where it wasn't on the store, it still managed to take the crown, which is pretty impressive, pretty astronomical in a way. So ahead of Grand Theft, uh, <clears throat> so was the best-selling game in both North America and Europe ahead of Grand Theft Auto 5, FIFA 21, NBA 2K1. Oh, great, those games and Minecraft, Minecraft. The results are even more impressive considering Sony advises not to play the game on base PlayStation 4 due to issues and performance issues still present. Cyberpunk 2077 has been removed from the PlayStation Store shortly after its release in December 2020. Due to the many glitches and performance issues on base PS4, the game has now reached a satisfactory level of performance. Yeah, we're still not out of this out of the hole yet, folks. According to CDP CEO Adam Kaczynski, something that will allow the developer to focus on fixes to the general systems. We have already reached a satisfactory level of stability. We have also worked on the overall performance, and we are quite satisfied with that. Of course, we have also fixed bugs and glitches, and we will continue to do so. Over time, we'll be introducing fixes to the general systems that players have pointed out as needing improvement. Yeah, I don't think you guys are just going to be working in the fucking cesspool of nerd negativity uh, trying to get this game up to speed. Uh, so, that's pretty much the end of that, and it's just talking about... Ooh, it's uh, the game will hit PS5, Xbox Series X later this year. Oh, can't wait for that. <laughs> and they're, you know they're going to sell it for like 60 fucking dollars. They should give you the game a free... They better do a free upgrade. Oh, I'm just, I'm just going to say, considering all the shit that people had to go through for this, oh my, at least on the you know, Xbox One X and PS4. <laughs> PS4 owners couldn't even fucking play the damn game until lately. Jesus Christ. I, it's, just, you're just never, you just, still things like this surprise me, folks, still surprise me. So, are you one of those people that have the PlayStation 4 version? How is it? I want to know. Have you guys tried it out? If anybody finds this, let me know what you think uh, about the PS4 version. I just think this is hilarious because this is way out of left field. Somehow, despite the, inf the infamy of this game and its development cycle and just release, it still manages to make the papers. I think it's just easy joke day. It's low-hanging fruit at this point, but still, there's always something that's new about this game that people can't stop talking about. And this actually, like I said, straight out of left field. Oh my God, dude. Oh God, it's ridiculous, ridiculous. I'm not even trying to exaggerate this. It's just silly. But let me know if anybody's playing it, let me know. Uh, I beat the game twice on PC. I had a great time. That was back... I got it a week or two later when it released, and then I beat it at the end of... Uh, twice, I think, at the end of January? So I spent, like, a good 120 to 30 hours in it. You know, I got my fill, and uh, I kind of want to wait, like, a year later for the anniversary and play it when it's even better, you know? Um, also, when there's, like, expansions that come out, that'll also be great. I still got to beat the Corpo playthrough. Still got to do that. So... This was the last meme of all meme articles, besides the first one, which was Persona 6. So, good job, everybody. How are we feeling? How are we feeling indeed? Oh, 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 this is berserk background. Oh, what do I do? I take that off. <laughs> oh, gosh, guys. I, I'm not going to lie. That was pretty entertaining to read about. We talked about... Final Fantasy XIV being sold out on digital storefronts, and then Cyberpunk selling like hotcakes on the PS4. What in the absolute hell is going on in the gaming universe right now? Jesus Christ, it's just all over the place. Um, good job for Atlas with Persona 6. <laughs> oh, God. It's, uh, and then, you know, PS4 crypto farming. <laughs> Fucking your gradients, why? Why? Not even Ukrainians can get their hands on PS5s. Damn it, imagine how powerful they would be with their PS5 crypto empire. Um, I think I'm going to put in the description that welcome to the meme 
side of, the, I don't know, something talking about how this is more of like a meme episode or something or silly, sillier side of things. Because a lot of these were very entertaining and just, just like I said, amusing or interesting to say the least. And, uh, you know, that pretty much covers it, folks. You know, it's been a great time. I, I enjoy doing this. And, uh, you know, if anybody who's just been waiting, waiting for wherever these episodes appear on YouTube or Spotify on a consistent schedule, you know, I can't help it. Uh, I'm not going to apologize for that because, you know, life happens and uh, doing other things. And uh, I try to do the Nico show at least once a week. And uh, I know on Spotify, I'm always like two weeks behind. Uh, bear with me on that. I know. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get better at this. But the the Spotify uploading or putting it on Libsyn and then it going to Spotify, that shit escapes my mind all the time. And it's really annoying. Like it's in my head when I wake up or throughout the day and then I forget to do it because I'm just distracted by how small my penis is. But that's besides the point. Uh, I think you guys know what I'm trying to say though, I think. But hey folks, I have been your host, Nico the Legend. I hope you did enjoy this episode because it was great. The well-mannered teenager, the snowflake, rambling idiot, and vigil. We had a great time. We had a great time. This was fun. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed my frog avatar. It's looking real slimy and cute. You know, it's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. And uh, if anybody else is just stopping by and you're missing out on all the action, just feel free to check out this when it's archived. And check out all the other stuff on the Nico the Legend channel. I appreciate it. I would love to get out of nine the 950 subscriber purgatory fucking... Oh, God. It's horrible. It's killing me. It's killing me. But one last round of applause before we go, folks. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a great day. If not, just remember that... Uh, the frogs are gay!